So this is the last cabin or old house of a old miner named Fitz Yeager. He mined up here, he had a mine up here, Deep Creek. You go 20 more feet, 20 more feet, he was gonna hit the gold vein. He never hit his, he never hit that, that gold. Spent his entire life blasting and by hand digging out the side of the mountain. I think when you live in a country like Montana and you're an artist, you know, you're kind of, you just kind of have to do landscapes. It's just the right thing to do. You live in a country that kind of is your muse in a way. For me, it's kind of it's kind of my you could call it a semi escape. It's not my reality. It's my it's my meditation. You know, I try to get the feeling of an image, not so much the exact, well, that's the truth. What I really try to go for is, is there an emotion? Do you feel something when you look at my paintings? Can you feel a morning? So my family, a uh, fourth generation logging family, or was. None of us really log too much anymore. The way of living has, has disappeared. This part of the country, most people have to leave. My uh, dad works in South Dakota now at the oil boom. It's kind of like all these lost things, all this, all this cultural flux, as you might say. People getting uprooted, leaving for the cities. Young people aren't really here anymore except for maybe summer jobs, come see family. We make a joke joke here where if you meet a local, we're like endangered species. So kind of what I like doing is I like to incorporate pieces of um, kind of the past with the present. So it's a combination of the people that live here photographing them in front of basically uh, history in a way. Well, it's kind of a funny thing. So I set this whole idea up, but then I couldn't get anybody to volunteer for it. Everybody's like, yeah, whatever. I'm not having anything to do with that. That sounds crazy. Gonna have to uh, make sure whoever models for me here has a tetanus shot. <laughs> I had one friend show up. He was he's kind of into photography, and and so I said, "Hey, how about you help me with something?" And in return, I'll give you a photo lesson. And we'll do hands-on. You can see how it works. And uh, and I grabbed a, a piece of a washer machine, and we we dragged it down into the woods. And it was a ways. It's about a quarter of a mile through the brush. I showed those images around a little bit, and suddenly I started getting more volunteers, because like, oh, this is what you want to do. This is kind of cool. We like this. And it kind of snowballed from there. I went from not having any volunteers to having everybody volunteer. I don't use um, professional models. I use my friends. I use people that, you know, do construction for a living. I use the stay-at-home mom. I use my nieces and nephews and little kids. I think there's some type of tie with most of us to a past that isn't that far away. 
So I like I like to incorporate incorporate these things that, that, that will eventually disappear into my artwork and have some type of remembrance. Oh well, whatever this was nailed to, they definitely wanted it to stay there. Fritz's story will be gone. Um, you know, basically the story of the West. In another 10, 20 years, you're not even going to be able to see too much of this. It's going to be gone. I think what I'm trying to do with a lot of my work is connect the everyday man. You know, it does you don't have to have an art degree. You don't have to even be into graphic design or anything to be able to look at it and go, I don't know why, but I have a, I, I have an emotional draw to this. I don't even know if I like it, but I feel it. And to me, that's probably the most important thing about a lot of my work is to convey an emotion and a feeling through what I do. Oh, my hand, child, grab its way, kicking horse, reservoir, strawberry hair. Strawberry hair, rest like diamond coals, diamond coals. Don't you worry, boy. I 